I'm joined here today at iCentered ED3 by Katie Graff from the BVGH and uh, I just wanted to welcome you. Thank you very much for participating today. You chaired a panel um, on open source for drug discovery and I just wanted to ask you a little bit more about your background and sort of well, um, how does your work in particular and the BVGH in general kind of fit into the drug discovery and development um, theme for NTD. Definitely. So, so I guess I'll start with my background. So I'm actually a virologist by training, um, but I've uh, kind of transitioned over into the NTD field when I started working with BVGH. And so um, I think that BVGH was really uh, founded to engage pharmaceutical companies and global health endeavors really to advance um, product development for NTDs, malaria, TB, and just diseases of poverty in, in general. And one of our core programs that we manage is called WIPO Research. And this is a consortium that's uh, co-managed between BBGH and the World Intellectual Property Organization of WIPO. And the goal of this consortium, which has about 100 members uh, across the globe representing academic organizations like Stanford University, Everest with the University here in the UK, um, we have government organizations like the NIH, um, and then we also have pharmaceutical companies like Pfizer and Johnson and & Johnson and Takeda. And together, the goal of the, these, this consortium is to establish partnerships that allow for the sharing of intellectual property. And so that could be you know, compounds, maybe a pharmaceutical company's compound library, could be data, could just be know-how and um, expertise that you're purifying membrane-bound proteins, et cetera. And through these collaborations, um, we, you know, the, the goal is to accelerate product development for, again, NTDs, malaria, and TB. And so as BBGH's role is to act as the academic matchmaker. So we, we interact with our different members, learn about what their research interests are, and also what their barriers are to uh, allowing them to advance their research. And then we find other members that have those assets that will allow them to overcome those barriers. We you know, put them together. And then hopefully they, they can um, you know collaborate and move um, move the, the, the research forward. And so once a collaboration is established, we like to you know just kind of uh, keep engaged as needed. You know, it's a it's a voluntary endeavor, so we we you know, kind of uh, get as involved as our, our our collaborators do within that little um, partnership. And we, you know, just ensure that the the partnership is going well, and you know, address challenges as needed. Um, and so that's where we you know, really kind of see our role in, in accelerating product development. Um, to date, we've established about 100 collaborations. Um, so that's been since 2011, late 2011, when the consortium was established to today. And those span about 14 different diseases, um, and we have about 17 collaborations that have actually um, advanced to the next stage of product development, and 11 of these are active, actively um, ongoing. And so, you know, uh, drug discovery take or drug vaccine diagnostics discovery can take a long time. So, we're only a five-year-old consortium so we haven't made any products yet but you know seeing that advancement to the next stage of development is kind of um, keeping you know the motivation is, is showing that there there is potential to actually um, you know, reach the goal of accelerating product development so that is very very encouraging and I do remember the launch of, um, uh, of the platform I also receive your regular email updates, so uh, I can see every time the membership is growing quite rapidly. So it's obviously been um, very well received and a useful tool for kind of all the stakeholders. Um, what have been some of the challenges that you encounter, um, or how do you plan to kind of evolve or, over time, or are you quite happy to remain in your current role? So I think. What next we want to do is take a more targeted approach. When we first started out, it was just you know anyone who uh, you know had a collaboration idea. You know, well, we facilitate a collaboration. It's not like we're not going to do that now, but we want to take a very um, you know 
strategic methodical approach um, looking at the pipelines for the different uh, um, pathogens um, and figuring out where the gaps are. So you have malaria, we've got, you know, there are a lot of drugs on the market, well, some drugs on the market, a lot in development, so maybe we don't want to focus as much of our attention there. We focus more on brutally ulcer or, or something where the pipeline's pretty much nil. And so actively try to establish collaborations that really fill those gaps. And then another area we want to do, and I, we touched on this uh, yesterday at the Open Access panel, was this idea of having a negative results database. And um, that's just going to save so much time and money. And so we're, we're, we're thinking about that and trying to figure out how we could actually do something like that. Um, so I think it would start out where, you know, obviously with our, our uh, members, approval to actually have some sort of online database that highlights the, uh, the, the either the, the results of what they've done so that people aren't you know, screening the same type of compounds against the same uh, target. That absolutely makes sense and yeah. I think also the, the, there's a change perhaps in, in perception about negative results um, exactly. and people are, especially funders, are a lot more um, happy to kind of, you know, view that as a step forward in the right direction for the wrong yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, okay, well it's been really a pleasure talking to you and um, Thank you. Oh, sorry, Kat, I wanted to ask one more thing. The um, out of the collaborations that you've seen um, come to light, have they been across a kind of a varied scope of diseases or do they tend to focus around a few sort of focal points? And is that something you would want to address or rebalance? Yeah, so right now we have um, we have 13 of the targeted diseases as well as kind of this other category which we're just, they're not um, NTD diseases, uh, they're not focused on NTDs but they're you know, diarrheal diseases. So we have uh, 13 diseases that we actively, ha or we've had collaborations on. So yeah, we would love to hit the, the extra diseases to get to that 21 um, full diseases that are encompassed in white research. So that's definitely a, you know, a, a goal, especially if there's, again, uh, we don't have, for example, we don't have any leprosy collaborations. And so, you know, looking at if there's, especially if there's a gap and there's a need for a drug vaccine or diagnostic, you know, uh, having a collaboration on that would be excellent. And we want, we want it also to be balanced on, you know, what's the burden? If, you know, if there's only five cases of a specific disease, should you really be focusing a lot of your collaboration efforts on, on that? Um, uh, and so there's, there's that. And then um, we do have, I think, malaria and TB are kind of the, the, the big hitters. Um, across the diseases, but the schistosomiasis and then lice and hat and shawness are also kind of the other the kind of big hitters in the in our kind of pipeline so far. So brilliant. Well, that's really encouraging to hear, and uh, a fantastic initiative over such a short period of time. So. Thank you very much for Thank your time you. today. It's been a pleasure to meet you, and um, hopefully we'll keep in touch and hear a lot more collaborations coming out and see what happens uh, next. So thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah.